first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Tonight's discussion is going to be on the solar flag activity and DNA transformation. But that's what is taking place right now. All right? There was an article according to spaceweather.com that came out on Monday, the 14th of February, 2011. And uh, it started talking about how the sun was unleashing the strongest solar flare of that of the year, of last year. Now, this comes into this year because exactly a year later, there was another report starting around the same time of this year. February the 14th, all right? So a lot of this solar flag activity was happening on Love Day or what is known as Valentine's Day. Of course, you know, that's the satanic um, meaning of it because, you know, that blood flowed in the streets in which that the blood turned brown, in which that became symbolic to chocolate, all right? But, you know, um, St. Valentine, um, long story behind that, you're going to look that up. I'm not going to take it to it here. However, the sun launches Earth direct solar flare. Um, that's what the article states, and that it was talking about that NASA Solar Dynamic um, Observatory recorded an intense flash of extreme ultraviolet radiation. So, you know, and now you got to understand that when ultraviolet radiation bombards the planet Earth, you as a melanated being, your melanin becomes a superconductor with large amounts of ultraviolet light. Now, if you don't believe me, get the book. It's called Unk. Um, the introduction is done by Brother Hiru Samaj, who is the husband of Queen of Fua, and is written by Nur Ak. Amen. Nur Ur Amen. And um, he states that setting under the visible light spectrum has an energy gap in it. However, when ultraviolet light is thrown into the mix, melanin becomes a superconductor. In other words, it speeds up the message coding. It activates the non-coding or inactive junk DNA. This is what's going on. Now, the eruption produced a 
loud blast of radio waves in which that was heard by shortwave receivers around the day side of the planet. Um, in particular, uh, it was a, um, a radio astronomer named Thomas Oshkrod in which that recorded these sounds in which that at 19 to 21 megahertz it says there was some of the strongest radio bursts and of the new solar cycle. He says, what a great solar day. All right? Now, if you get quantum physicist, um, Michio Kakaku, he's a Japanese scientist um, here in the United States, in which that he states that 2012 looks like it's going to be the largest solar flare um, year, the most powerful one out of over 100 years. This is documented according to NASA and quantum physicists. So this is the year, 2012, of, you know, which correlates to the old Mac Mayan calendar. All right, some say that it ended October the 28th of last year. Um, some say it's getting ready to take place December the 21st of uh, 2012, and that that possibly could be the Illuminati uh, date for this trend. It doesn't matter. We know that the planet, the sun, the solar system is going to be in perfect alignment with Alcyon, which is the central sun, in the Pleiades. And this sun, Alcyon, is hundreds of times larger in our sun, all right? And currently, we were sitting on the outer arm band, and we are graduating and we're moving from in, the, um, in what is called the dark rift, or dark rift, all right, rift. Um, you can look this up also. And this dark rift, um, as we are in it, um, there's another um, zodiac sign in which that is moving into place that is situated between the Sagittarius. It's called Aphasius, in which that actually is reminiscent to Imhotep, all right? And that this particular um, zodiac sign is called the Serpent Wrestler. Now, we know that Imhotep was the third dynastic physician, did brain surgeries and heart surgeries, as well as also over um, 8,000 cures for uh, ailments. The portion of this information from the for the Evers papyrus, all right, in which that it states that he was the father of medicine, moderately the father of medicine. I mean, this was during the um, Third Dynasty or dynastic period. He was the prime advisor, the prime minister, the Zoja or Doja, all right, who was the pharaoh or Naga or Nagu or Neganagas, the king of kings during that time period, all right? And simply put, his symbol was now a medical symbol that is found on hospitals throughout the world, which is known as the Kadusa. That's the Greek rendition, all right, it is known as the Uranus. The feminine counterpart is known as the Washeta, all right, or Washita. And it simply means that as the energies go up the spinal column, that ball in which that um, expands with the wings symbolizes the expansion of the mind, the opening of the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. And that middle ball area is symbolized as a pioneer gland. Parius states, who was a French philosopher, he states that that is the um, seat of the soul and that the soul is embedded inside of the pioneer gland. So from those serpents or that kundalini or that washata energy raising up and ascending to heaven, it awakens. It awakens um, you into more than just consent usage of your brain, into the usage of the other 90%. In which that give you access to the other 90% of your inactive DNA, which give you 90% observation of the universe in which that is unseen. In other words, it taps you into the dark matter 
for that black energy. It also activates um, your jump DNA, which is 90% of your DNA. So this information, these solar flakes, um, is producing this and will produce this. Okay? Now, what we also found out that there is, um, was another recent report dealt with massive solar flares hitting the earth in which that was to disrupt the power and the GPS of flight. Now, this is actually came out just a month ago. This actually came out just a month ago, March the 8th, all right, um, 2012. And what it stated was that so far, the orientation of the magnetic field has been opposite of what is needed to cause the strongest storm. As the event progresses, the field right now, there's several um, the spacecraft caught videos of solar flare that is as it was hurled a wave of solar plasma and charged particles a corona mass ejection or CME into space. Those particular corona mass ejections bombarded the planet Earth. It hit the planet, all right? So it seems that every single month now, we are being bombarded by solar flare activity. All right? Now, it also states that earlier predictions estimate that the CMEs will reach the Earth, you know, in the effect of likely. Now, when these flares hit, uh, the Aurora Borealis, or the Northern Light, as well as also the Southern of the Aurora Borealis, um, these lights expanded further than just the pole. Area it came down, like for example, the one at the North Pole came down, and it was it was able to be seen um, in the Washington State area, Oregon, you know, um, and, and other places. So there's so much energy coming in now, and we are so caught before that these charged particles that they are talking about, solar plasma, is actually what is called stardust energy or stardust particles. And over 300,000 tons of this stardust particle force to the planet Earth. Okay? okay? So, this is, um, this is what they um, actually are referring to. Now, the solar eruptions occurred when the sun let loose two huge X class solar flares that ranked amongst the strongest types of sun um, storms. And the biggest of those flares registered as a X5 four class solar storm of the space on um, weather scale. And the CMEs from this flare is the one that could cause disruption, as it says, of satellite operations. Right? This is what they um, were saying on one of these last storms from just a month ago. Right, so that is something in which that we have to, they have to be concerned about because according to Nick Otaku, the Japanese um, scientist um, here in America, he stated specifically that um, this year, 2012, going into 2013, will be one of the strongest ever within the last 100 years according to their calculation. And that 100 years ago, um, you know, um, they were just entering into the industrial age. Um, it knocked out power lines for months, all right? This is what he said. It knocked out the power line for months, all right? So um, that's what the scientists were and are afraid of. Now, <clears throat> Not only are the solar flares going to change um, 
the DNA. And this is what they actually are talking about. The many articles which have been written on it um, right about now. All right. Um, one is called uh, Frequency Shift. And it says one of the largest solar players in history was unleashed also January the 27th, 2012, and it marked the entrance or the entry into full consciousness of those choosing ascension. So for those who are who were straddling the fence prior to that, now they have come on over into consciousness and they are looking more in depth into this information. All right. Now this has occurred several times. All right. Um, we had the harmonic frequency in which that occurred in 1987. We had the harmonic concordance in which that took place November the 8th, um, 2003. Um, we also had in 1999 um, the Grand Cross in which that took place around August the 11th. And these particular three events leading into now is what is known as uh, the OMEX or Mayan calendar um, season of December the 21st, 2012, all right? Um, during these particular harmonic grand crosses, harmonic concordance um, leading into now, 2012, of the OMAC Mayan calendar, what we found out is that these were all times when the awakening was taking place. It started out smaller during 1987 um, and increased in frequency in intensity until now, up to now. And so um, this is one of the single greatest events. These are basically the greatest single events in history in which they're activated to raise the frequency of both the earth and also humanity. So this frequency increased more at the beginning of humanity's return to an awakened state because we have moved from out of the Kali Yuga cycle all right, Grandmaster Kanyata Sarah um, has stated this, you know, that we are moved, that we have moved from out of the Kali Yuga age and we're now into the Sakta Yuga age, in which that we meaning that we have moved out from that last age, which is 2,000 years of the Piscean age, and we are now going into the Aquarian age, in which that deals with the awakening or the age of truth, all right, in which that is symbolized as Hiru. Hiru symbolizes light. So this is the time now in which that light frequency will become more intense. And these solar flare activity symbolizes this activity of the return of Hero. Hence, this is what is known as the return of Christ or Christ consciousness. This is the shift. So it's not talking about a man from 2,000 years ago in which that we have become uh, caught up into with blind and blue eyes and white or pale skin. No, this is talking about um, a consciousness in which that even Jesus stated within the scripture that he would do greater works than I, so that you would even do greater works than he did. So why would he be the focus um, in this return if that happened 2,000 years ago in the flesh? Obviously, for us to do greater things than he, he wouldn't return um, at this time in flesh, unless he was returning through your flesh, which is called our consciousness, which is called come to. Because another form of Peru was called Kansu, in which that the word consciousness is derived from, which is um, an ancient comedic or Tamaranian or Tamarian word. All right? So this is what is going on. Now, the actual TME um, in which that have bombarded the planet Earth will continue throughout 2012. And by law of attraction, um, you will be able to reap the benefits, especially as a melanated being, because the planet will shift from a third or fourth dimensional state and come into a fifth dimensional new Earth. Right? And the solar says marks the beginning of that time period or that age or cycle. Now, how do we know this? Of course, we're not third dimensional beings. Those with melanin and those with um, hair, it was that is in the um, shape of the antenna hole, which, if you remember the old TV, um, those um, was in the shape of what is called shin, S H P N or S H I N, within 
um, the teachings of the Egyptians, ancient Egyptian Shinnic spirit. All right, that's what the ancient Kamals or the ancient Sumerians would say, or the ancient Kassetis. Right, um, state. Um, in the Orient, in China, Shen means also spirit. So, our spirit is being enhanced. We are encapsulating more spirit. Hence, called the Holy Spirit, which is actually talking about the Holy Breath. And through the Holy Breath, it activates that spirit within you, which is called the Kundalini energy. All right, and that Kundalini energy is the Mother Goddess principle of resurrection. That is, um, um, along with the atoms in certain locations, such as in your spine, in your heart, and within your pineal gland, in which that is awakened by her, in which that symbolizes the three um, suns or the three um, symbols of Heru. You have um, Heru who comes up over the horizon in the morning, hence the word horizon from Heru, all right, in which that is known as um which is known as, uh, well, some say, um, Atun. As it comes up into the noon period, it becomes Atan, uh, Atun. And then as it goes down during the night period, um, some say it's Amen. Depends on who and what you read, of course, this change. Atun sometimes is placed as um, set as the evening and Amen in the morning. So, it rules symbolizes all three, Amun, Atun, and Atun, all right, which is symbolic to the three atoms of the three suns in those various locations of the body. Once again, the base of your spine, in the sacral bone area, in the heart, in the right um, 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 ventricle of your heart, all right, or what is called the right atrium, excuse me, of your heart, and then also in your pineal gland. All right, each one symbolizes the resurrection of our star. That is Haim Abyss and symbolic to three Rafi, in which they speak about. All right, in other words, in which that Haim Abyss was hit in the head by the three Rafi, and he must be um, resurrected um, to stand at a 90 degree perpendicular level. All right, this is what this is all referring to. Um, most understand this metaphysical teaching, so therefore they can't teach you this. And this is why we suffer as a people, because we don't know our own symbology. You think your ancestors left something on the walls from 4,000 to 10,000 to 2,000 years ago for you just to go to Africa in order to say, oh, nice pictures? You think that they did that much building? They built one of the largest pyramids on the planet Earth, Khufu or Kiyat? in the center of the planet Earth, in which that not even a razor blade or a piece of paper can um, can fly through 20 to 200 ton blocks. And you think that they left all that, but you can go to Africa, to Egypt, or what is called um, um, Kush, Abyssinia, Ethiopia, all various names eons ago. Kemet, Kamal, Tamarek. But you can say nice pictures and not know the meaning and not to have them in your Kashi record that you do along the God or within your DNA. How foolish but to think so. And anyone who tells you so, get away from them. The ignorant. And they're fooling themselves. All right, the Bible is not greater than the pyramid in which that the Bible stories come from. We know that this is what took place. All right, so we have to understand, understand all of this information. All right. Now we know that by the law of attraction, um, that the fear may be their own demise. The solar flare may indeed, um. Put it in to lower vibration and resurrect and put a focus and a redirection and a focus on the spiritual development. And this is what is going on. This is why movies such as Chronicles have come out 
showing um, a brother able to fly, you know. Of course, we see that in the um, movie Hancock with Will Smith, All right? These stories are told over and over again, and they have to put you in a scenario but it's really talking about you. No matter how many times they try to kill off the characters, like they did in Chronicles, but they couldn't kill off Will Smith because um, he plays the star. Even in his movie, uh, movie I Am Legend, um, he survived till the end, and you still don't know what actually took place between him and the zombie-like creature or his man-made, um, or the man-made mankind. So these solar flares on unleashing have a higher frequency, and there's no way to look at what's happening. These higher frequencies affect and raise the vibration of all that is encountered. This is why they are um, trying their little people attempt by putting up the chemtrails on which that is laced with, with the major ingredient of aluminum. So aluminum is a reflective agent. They're trying to stop these ultraviolet light frequencies coming in to make your melanin a superconductor, transforming you into a um, a Sazam or a Superman, all right, or a um, Wonder Woman or Super Woman, all right, in other words, a God, a God. And we're talking about these, we, this gender thing that we're talking about is we really talking about to a singular um, aspect. Okay, so these will affect and raise the vibration, all right, those who have melanin, um, you know, and their earth frequency increases and can become uncomfortable even to those who have prepared for some time as we vibrate at an ever-increasing rate in, you know, into realms, you know, which is the 50 and this is what we was talking about. We, we was talking about, you know, that um, the third dimension is based on length, width, and height. The fourth dimension is based on depth and width, time and space. The fifth dimension is based on energy, light, photonic rays, in other words, Ra. So this is also the return of Heru, it's the return of Ra, which is known as Ur Ra, which is Allah, you know, and... Um, Therefore, this is also an, another reason why um, Islam is on the rise is because of the usage of the name of Allah, which is actually Ur Ra, all right? And not Islam in the sense of the traditions of Arabs. We're not talking about that. We're talking about consciousness, all right? We're talking about African religion. In particular, this African religion in which that comes from out of um, the Egyptian or Giza plateau area in which that's spreading throughout the world, okay? Because the ancient mystery school spread it throughout the world. The temple, the information that was in the temple of Karnak, the temple of Luxor, or Waset, you know, um, that information spread it throughout the world, all right? The Dogons had that information. The Olmecs had that information. They were the builders of the pyramids throughout the world. Regardless if they was made of um, blocks of stones of granite and lime, or they was made with um, made made with um, known as mounds made of dirt and gravel, of sand, of crystals. It doesn't matter. They made these particular um, pyramids or mirrors and taquines. Tekken or Tekken news um, for energy vibration. Matter of fact, um, it is stated that the pyramids would begin to resonate with an ohm sound. Well, the mounds um, or pressure points is what is also this one note and meridian line, ley line, energy grid line of the planet Earth, as well as all the pyramids in which that correlates to as above, which are the particular. Um, Structures in the sky, you know, the constellations of the zodiac, in which that they brought heaven to earth. This is what the ancients was doing. So if you go to Cambodia, um, you will have Angkor Wat. In Angkor Wat, 
right? And the word Cambodia is short for Cam and Pata. It was followers from out of Kemet, um, or Kamau, they were Kamau people, and they were followers of Pata, which became the word Buddha, all right? And in Inca or Unk, Ur, Lot, there is known as a 50, um, 50 cities in which that there are many structures in which that in Cambodia, that particular area of Inca Wat is set up after the constellation Draco. The Giza pyramid area is set up of the Orion Sirius constellation. All right? Um, even the Serpent Mound in Ohio is set up after Hydra, even though it is speculated that it was um, after another serpent. All right. So these are the various things in which that is taking place in the structures in which that we not, in order to help tap us back into this unification and the science of higher vibration. All right. So um, we have to um, document this information. All right. We recommend we recommend that um, you get a diary. And you start writing down these earth changes or these transformations or mutations which are taking place within you. We spoke about the fact that some of us will go through uh, various things. All right? So, in order to counteract those various things, you have to take um, alkaline water and various, which is called alkaline or electrical plant food. All right? Being that a lot of this energy is going to come into your melanin, the herb in which that helps with that is alfalfa and spirulina and corolla and wheatgrass. In other words, foods in which that has high amounts of chlorophyll because there's only one difference between your melanin and the chlorophyll in plants. It's a magnesium molecule. That's it. Other than that, it's identical. And we spoke about this before, that even if you look at a baby's bottle, when they are born, you can see a green uh, area on them in which that is tinted green. And that area um, is near the Kundalini energy in which that the whole body at one time was that tint. There were Ethiopians to this day who actually still have a greenish tint which symbolizes that the magnesium molecule is activated in their, in their blood instead of the iron. The iron has given us a rough color, making us more reddish or brown in complexion. All right? Iron um, is an electromagnetic conductor. So when you put these things together, but I am in order for it to um, stay at its pristine state, must have alkaline water. It cannot be acidic. If it's acidic, it will rust. In other words, deteriorate. This is what is going on. All right? Now, these, um, being that your hair follicle is in the shape of a nine and eight, which is based on the shin, which is fourth dimensional beings, and you're being held down by third dimensional beings because, like I said, if you look at the um, old TV, they have rabbit ears and tennis. Rabbit has fur. The European or Albion has fur. They have straight hair. Now, if you have circular hair, you know, or curly hair, or wavy hair, or kingly, or kinky, or nappy hair, as they refer to it as, you are eighth or ninth um, um, Ethereum being. And you are a fourth dimensional being. And so you being trapped by a third dimensional being who's trying to hold you down from graduating to the fifth dimension, which that is based on light because they can't go into the fifth dimension because they haven't made the transformation into a fourth dimensional being. The only way they can do that is by learning the science of cloning or artificial insemination. DNA altering drugs and 
um, tapping um, into the spinal column, what is called stem cell, or tapping to, um, um, like we said, um, test two, or simply have to mix back in with us to become fourth dimensional beings. That's the only way they can make the transition. Otherwise, um, meaning will be wiped off. According to Elijah Muhammad and Nobu Ali, um, a portion will be saved. Elijah Muhammad stated that there will be some who will survive um, um, based on these natural selections. It has nothing, nothing to do with me. I'm simply telling you a fact. This has nothing to do with racism. It has to do with facts. Don't believe me? Go and do your research. Check it out. Now, real simple, um, Noble Drali said that he would leave about 8% of them. And obviously they would be the ones with dark hair and dark eyes, who have olive complexion, who can take the rays of the sun, who can tan, but on their driver's license, it might say that they are white. I understand that white and black are actually fiction. We're not talking about the fiction, political fiction that's based on racism. As Dr. York used to say, no one brings the race in racism. So that's not what we're referring to here. Okay? So as we move into the fifth dimension, everything would be based on light or energy. We'll be able to see each other's auric cells and know the company that we are in and know when we need to leave each other alone or when we can uplift each other or when a person needs healing. We'll be able to feel it as well as see it. Out of body experiences become more common. Biolocation will be more possible. Transforming your body into a Macabre. As you enter into your immortal body, which is resonating at the throat chakra, the third eye, as well as also at the crown, and transforming your body into a tetrahedron or some type of um, geometrical shape in which that um, can transport you from here to other realms, density levels, dimensions, cosmic realms, planets, where there's life and communicating and talking with various ancestors on those planes. Well, it's also tapping into the ancestors who are here or have been here with you in the ionosphere, which sits about 62 miles to 3,000 miles up into the sky. And this is where the ancestors go to. They will be able to go into higher dimensions and escape Earth velocity, which is at seven um, Earth. As the Human or human resonance of the planet rays from 7.83 hertz, and the magnetic field becomes stronger. We will reach, um, I think, above um, 14 hertz is when the Earth's um, human resonance, and we will reach um, a point of this energy. Um, it has been documented that the Earth's magnetic field is becoming stronger instead of weaker. It was once postulated that the Earth's magnetic field was becoming weaker. And it might lower itself for a time period in order to come back on stronger than ever. This is what has been speculated. So during that time or during that process of the Earth reaching 14 hertz and supposedly the magnetic field reaching zero, um, we were going to what's called zero point, according to physicist Greg Brady. But currently, they're finding water, atmosphere, or more on the moon. The atmospheres are changing. So this people's attempt is to keep the atmosphere from changing because they told you that the Earth was... Um, ozone layer was destroyed because of monofluoral carbon, in which that came from other aerosol cans. When you was walking around in the 70s with Afro sheen, and that these supposed monofluoral carbons 
is what went up into the atmosphere and treated. No, you are the sum of people. And your your and based on the law of attraction, you attract the solar winds on which that was what destroyed the ozone layer. These solar winds destroy the ozone layer. These same winds in which that is happening now for solar path are called corona mass ejection or sunspots or uh, solar flares. This is what is destroying the ozone layer. And which that is leaving you with no covering because that covering was put there artificially by us for only a six thousand year period. And we are now this and we have now um depleted it based on a graduation period in which it's taking place on the past. All right, this is what is going on. All right, this is what is going on. So you have to understand on uh, what is taking place right now. All right? Now, when you're talking about transforming your body into a macabre, you will be able to do that. And you are able to do that now. But you will be able to do it at a higher frequency or dimensional level, which is um, based on the fifth dimension and higher, in which that um, through... Um, a technique known as the 17 breath or 24 breath or 28 breath technique, in which that you can learn um, under the flower of life, um, in which that I'm part of the order of under the Bible of Malchizedek, in which I was given those keys back in um, 2002, 10 years ago. So you can actually do this. My friend, um, we actually... Um, did this back in 2002, and we was looking at each other grinning because we actually was hearing the humming noise as our bodies would be, our auric was being transformed and spread out, you know, and it says that it's spread out to 55 feet, and two people can actually take 144,000 people with them. Right, this is according to that information, and how you increase that is by absorbing cosmic crystalline energy and drawing up earth kundalini energy through what is known as your pranic tube or your prana tube in which that runs parallel to your um, cor- um parallel to um to your spinal column but it does not bend and you are able to draw energy up and in and down and you're able to meet at the heart, meet at the throat chop, meet at the third eye, meet at crown in order to create six um to create a uh, four, fifth, six, seven and higher dimensions based on how many organs you have because we are now are uh, being endowed through our genetics, our DNA have more organs or more um endocrine glands, which is now moved from seven churches to nine churches and eventually twelve churches. And one extra outside, which gives us 13, which is known as the, um, which 12 is known as the star body. Look this information up. This is why um, in the Holy Bible, it tells you in the book of Revelation that it moves, that um, in the Revelation 4 chapter, it says that there was seven stars in the Son of Man's right hand. By the time you get to Revelation, the 12th chapter, it says there were 12 stars above the head as a crown above the woman's head. So the woman symbolizes the red dragon, which is the kundalini energy, in which that raises up in order to activate those 12 um, chakras, in which that also would correlate to um, the coming back online. Uh, instead of two strands of DNA, you would begin to have 12 strands of DNA because the 10 strands, which is called your jump DNA, which is now known as non-coding, will become active once again. And they will... Um, 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 and those message codes will come together. So instead of two, you will have 12 pairs, um, 12 um, DNA strands. And that's physical. And you will have 12 ethereal. So hence 24. And the 12 pair of cranial nerves in your brain will become fully active. The last three pairs of um, cranial nerves in your brain, when it becomes active, you go above the zodiac and the influence of karma, which is known as the will of law or the will of destiny. You will no longer be hindered by karma. Your karma will be cleansed. This is what is meant by you will become white as snow because your soul will be cleansed at the level. All right? So you will be breathing through your pranic tube. 
So as you actually, at one time, what, you, what people don't realize is that your pineal gland set further up on top of the head. And if you ever look at the ancient Egyptians, they depict a pine cone at the top of the head. That was somebody's the pineal gland, which is reminiscent of a pine cone. There's 144,000 sand-like magnetic particle crystals, which is known as the crystal city. When the kundalini energy comes up, it crystallizes um, those um, crystals, which is 144,000 to make them one diamond um, cluster, and which that at that point DMT will be able to be produced via your brain. Not just that when you were born or when you die, but while you are living. And that DMT, that methadone, um, 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 dynamite, that will be able to make you do these things in which that um, you've only dreamt of. All right? There's certain plant foods that you can take right now. One is marijuana, which has a, lot, a large abundance of THC in it. But we're not talking about the ones in which that comes from the ponic, um, the water ponic system, which is one gigantic bud, which has been altered by, you know, um, through manufacturing and through chemical process. You're talking about that real cheap, all right, that lamb skin. All right, this is what we're talking about. And there's another plant from out of Africa and West Africa that's called Tabernacle Yabuga plant, which is 70 times more potent, all right, than marijuana, and which that produces DMT, as well as also the shrooms or the mushroom in which that grows within the dung of cow or cattle, in which that is... Um, um, red and white, which also produces um, DMT. These particular herbs will help you get to those levels, all right? Because THC is carbon. The C part is carbon, in which that taps into your melanin. Your melanin is mostly carbon. All right, you are a carbon being. Those who are lack melanin or sufficient amount of melanin are called carbon-based beings. All right? So you have to understand that these are herbs. They're not, we're not looking at this from the European standpoint of legal and illegal because they make anything illegal that they choose to so they can market it when the time is right. So you can purchase this from them. We're talking about particularly what is lawful, because anything produced by nature is lawful, period. And it's part of your unalienable rights. Period. Your unalienable rights. This is the reason why for the Moorish information is so in order to tap you back into um your indigenous um ship your birthright, your heritage. That's the purpose for that. So you can learn the science of law and protect yourself, your property, and your assets. Now, other herbs, being that the energy is going to come down into the crown, um, you have to know well what, you know, helps with the brain. Well, there's three herbs in particular. Guadacola, ginkgo balaba, ginseng. Those are called the triple G's, in which that helps with um, the manufacturing of DMT as well as also the enhancement of the absorption of these electromagnetic or photon energy or waves or frequencies as they come in through your via your antennas, which is your hair follicles. Your eighth and ninth, seven, eighth, ninth Easter as we refer to us. Okay? So um, this this is science, all right? Now, you're talking about using these herbs as tea, alkaline tea, water, in which that, that's one of the ways to get into your system. All right? It's quicker than eating, and it's quicker than smoking. 
in a sense, because you all know, you know, in a sense of um, as all you know, smoke goes into the lungs, but when it goes into the stomach cavity, the water itself becomes part of the whole cellular structure because the cells have to bathe in the electrolytes and the enzymes as the extracts the energy from the water. So what is going to be alkaline so it's energetic, it's electrical. And it has magnetic properties to it. You have to understand what is going on here. Okay? So um, these are the best ways in order to um, actually um, do what needs to be done. All right? Now. All right, all right. Now, um, let's go to the lines and see if there's any questions. What's going on here? Area code 469. You're on the line. 469. Please. Hello? Yeah, peace, peace. How you doing, Dr. Eileen? All right. How you doing, God? I'm doing well. Uh, this is uh, hey. Demetrius from uh, Dallas. <laughs> yes, peace. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I was listening to Brother Asir, uh Super right. Haven Radio last night, and uh-huh. he was talking about a new planet that they discovered called Tai Chi. Right. And uh, I hadn't even heard of it yet. And uh, I went on the Internet and I found out they don't found like five or six new planets and they fighting over whether this and the new sun or not, you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. They, they found over six objects in the sky actually near this particular solar system in which that um, this is why they actually, I don't know if you heard, but this is why two, about, that's about three, four years ago, they removed Pluto as a planet. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, and um, they made it a planetoid or just simply a um, um, a comet. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, they did that. You know, like about three, four years ago. And, you know, and the weird thing about these planets mm-hmm. is they don't found moons around them too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Matter of fact, the Earth has um more moons than what is been speculated. Matter of fact, um, the Earth has up to eight moons. Oh. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that they're just finding out, you know what I'm saying? They're just finding these things out. So the Earth has actually, like, eight satellites. The largest one is the one in which that um, is the um, closest to us, which is about, uh, you know, which is some odd thousands of miles away from us right now. But, you know, that's the closest one, you know, or the largest one that we can see. But there are um, at least um, eight more in which that they have found. Recently, you can look that up too. And um, they also removed Pluto as a planet, but they made Chiron, which they found back in 1977, mm-hmm. which um, they have made that now a planet. And Chiron means wounded healer. And the planet in which that um, has the major influence over it, or the constellation, I say, or zodiac that has the major influence over that planet, Chiron, is the, um, the serpent wrestler, um, which is um, officious, which is Imhotep. So here you have Imhotep, who's the father of medicine, and the planet of influence is called the wounded healer, Chiron. That's no coincidence. And these are the um, planet and the zodiac sign in which that is moving into play right now. Matter of fact, it is situated, like I said, officious is situated between Scorpio and Sagittarius. Sagittarius symbolizes the lower hips, thigh area, small of the back, and Scorpio symbolizes the genitalia. But in between that area, in the sacral bone area is the serpentine fire, known as the coccolini, in which that officia symbolizes that awakening. Okay? It's, a, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, the A.E. Powell's book that uh, talk about the different chains and cycles, you know. Right. Um, what is it called? You said it was like over 70 planets in the solar system. Yeah. You know, seven bodies, you know. And I mm-hmm. was talking to a sister last night, and, I, and she said, where, where are all this stuff coming from? I said, it's been the whole time just speeding up enough to catch it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, uh, well, you know, our, eye, our eye is opening, so we're now able to see and pierce the veils of the illusions, you know, in other words, to break beyond the matrix and see more than what is because there's more within us in which it's being activated. That's the reason why. That's the reason for tonight's show. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get off the phone in a minute, but one more okay. thing I want to mention 
Uh, it's an mm-hmm. outright attack on the moors. Uh, you know, I drive trucks, and right now I'm in Little Rock. And uh, mm-hmm. last time I was up here last uh, Sunday, they had arrested mm-hmm. a moor uh, over here after you know coming, you know, traffic stop or whatever. They never said right. what he did, but they said that. Now this this is ironic because his, his his wife came out uh, to support him, and they end up uh, tasering him and locking her up too. But they never did stress. Uh, why they locked them up, you know, and, they, and, the, and the guy, the black guy who they had commentating on the news was saying that, now he was saying he had Morris nationality, you know, but they never said why he got arrested, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, we're coming back not into just our DNA awakening, but we're coming back into our birthright in which that we know that we are original inhabitants of this landmass. You know, do you think that the constituents of the elite, the Illuminati, you know, said Illuminati, you know, even though um, I'm like Tupac, kill Illuminati, you know, do you think that they want this awakening to take place? Of course not. So they have their goon squad out there known as the police who's a policy enforcers in which they don't know the Constitution, but yet they take their oath to it. And what happens is that we whip their asses in court. So, I mean, they might be an outside as far as taking us to jail, but when it comes to court time, the cases are dismissed or disposed of. So for those who are looking from the outside, you might say what you said in which that, oh, man, the more got arrested and blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to court time, that shit get dismissed. And I know because we already had like about 25 different cases dismissed. So I can speak from experience. And plus we have lawsuits against the police officers for violations of rights and deprivation of rights, um, in which that is in the United States Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. Not federal exactly. court. United States Supreme Court the highest court in the land, Article Three Court. So, um, you know, this is where we have our lawsuits at. So um, anyone who wants to keep playing games, you know, and, um, you know, straddling the fence, then be my guest, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, when it comes to this information, you want your nationality. You want, um, um, you know, to be able to protect your property and assets and be the secure party creditor. There is no out of the so-called system because they still have your birth certificate. And they still tell yeah. you... You know, your name spelled to know a cap's on the stock market as a commodity. You will work your exactly. way to go. According to the IRC, which is the um, Internal Revenue Code, um, each child is worth about $650,000 to $1.6 million upon delivery when the mother becomes the informant on that birth certificate. And she makes that child award to the state. All right? So exactly. that child is weighed in gold. Gold is about what seventeen thousand. I mean seventeen hundred um, dollars an ounce. Mhm. Okay. So um, you talk about that child is worth over a million dollars at birth, and then as the child becomes eighteen, that bond matures, which is called that birth certificate. So if you don't know, you know how deep this rabbit hole goes, really, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be listening to you. You know what I'm saying? Because right now I'm trying to become like Neo. Fuck the bullshit. You ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Uh, I, I, people just need to think about one thing when the cop. You, if you keep like usually the like the so-called Zimmering Zimmering crap going on in Florida. Any time right. I ever heard of anybody killing somebody with self-defense, they take both of y'all downtown. Uh, they take the person that did it because they want to break bread off of him too. You know, right. it's never about you know how he justified. You know, we just gonna not lock him up. You're right, no, this, is, was a, this is a major ritual, you know? Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, his father is a former Supreme Court judge. His mother is a um, Superior Court clerk. And you really think that um, he was going to be, uh, and, and he's a Hispanic, but he has a Jewish name. <laughs> I mean, Ironically, I mean, huh? Yeah, I mean, I mean come on. Let's, let's, That's let's the whole Spaniard Morris thing tie right. in, the Sephardic right. type. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, the uh, um, the Kazian, you know what I'm saying? They, the, yeah. The, um, the Kazar, as we refer to the map. Mm-hmm. All right. So, you know, yeah, if there was a Sephardic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. That's, that's the way that he looks, Sephardic, because he is Spanish or Hispanic with a Jewish name. However, the way in which that they are playing it off is um, as if he's a, um Ashkenazi or um you know, or that type of Jew, a, co- a covert or convert, 
Okay, but um, let me get on to the next call. Is here. Uh, appreciate the uh, brother. Appreciate you. Pre- appreciate it, bro. See. All right, we got area code two one two two one two. Area code, you on the line? Peace. Two one two. Hello. Code. Yes, peace. Hello. Greetings, peace. Oh yes, yes, yes. Doctor Alim Bay, Chief Crowder here in Philadelphia. Man, I took the Ricky class last year. All right, appreciate that, bro. How you doing? Yeah, you know, we had a couple of conversations, man. I was going to give a um, call in today. My question's a little off topic, but you kind of touch on everything. I mean, nothing's really off topic when you're talking metaphysics here. Right. So, really, my question to you was really around it. You, uh, first of all, I listen to all your shows. Um, you know, obviously, we've had some conversations. I would listen to all your shows. I go back and listen to them all. But you talk a lot about the discharging debt and the document uh, process that you've got to go through with the name changing. Um, all the forms you have to fill out, you know, that you know, the the affidavit claim of the lien. And what I was wondering was if there was like a specific place, book, website where you can go and get all that information instead of just having to go through and listen to all kind of like all your, your prior shows and getting that information in terms of how to do that. Because I realize if not, then I kind of want to, you know, get that information from you and then document it in a position where, because I know a lot of people need that information and want that information. Right, right, right. Well, um, it used to be a good place, but they actually shut it down. Now it was called Fam, um, www.famguardian.org. dot um, org. It's no longer up. Right, it's no longer oh, it's, up. No, it's no um, longer there. Right, it's no longer there. But you can go to www. dot two zero one five. dot com or dot org. Two zero one five. dot org. I think it's dot org, but either dot com. You can put them both in in order to see what pulls up. Okay. That's a website on which that you can go to and check out um, information. Basically, that's twenty fifteen dot org then, right? Right, and you can also go to our website www dot cultural c u l t u r a l dash which is hyphen freedom dot com or cultural dash freedom dot com. Right, 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 right. We go through um, our services and we list. Um, all the other forms um, right there. And then what you can do okay. is just put the forms into the energy search, um, engine search of Google and see what comes up and do your research. Okay. Because, yeah, I mean, I was, um, that's something I always wanted to kind of really seriously look into because I got, you know, some assets I want to kind of get uh, under. And I'm, my, another question around that is now to go from, like, your American name with the birth certificate and all that stuff moving into, that's obviously got the bonds and everything associated with that, and moving into the, you know, really, if you're going to change your indigenous application to like a, a more, becoming a more, how long is that process, and is there a cost associated with that? Immediately, as soon as you get it um, sealed and signed, it's done, period. Excuse me? Which, yeah, well, let me explain. All right. Um, normally, they would tell you to go to um, through the court system, in which that deals with your name change, in which that a judge has to decide over um, if you have the ability in order to get your name changed or not, we bypass that whole thing. We do a common law name correction, which we take um, to the civil filing section of the clerk of superior court, and we file it right there with them, and they'll stamp it, seal it, and, um, you know, after we get it notarized and after we get it um, and after we sign it and have two witnesses sign it, I mean, it's done right there. So as soon as we get it in our hands, we don't have to post it up on no bulletin board. We don't have to do all, put it in no newspaper and do all those things in which that, um, is outside of common law. You have the right, according to um, common law name, um, as well as also to um, the name. Um, whenever you look up the um, name or appellation, you have the right to change your name at any given time in which that you choose to. That is your constitutional right. And a judge simply gets in the way of that process. He is attempting to impede the process. And being that he took his oath to the Constitution, that's in violation. So actually, that's treason. Okay. Okay. So, so in that sense, really, that's once you do the name change, does that does that officially? The obvious, I want to look into the more thing a little more and be you know, obviously the name, more change, like, the name change, like I said, is done right there. So soon you get the paper right, back that, from the court. And does that make you? That also is done right there. But does that does that is that all you have to do? Is there anything else you have to do to? 
Yeah, well, like I said, go to my website and go to our services and you see the documentation and we say what you need in order to do that. Right, right, right. Well, I'm, I'm going to, you know, obviously, I'm going to call anyway. I'm gonna, yeah, right. I know you need an affidavit of nationality, affidavit of citizenship, um, affidavit of revoking power of attorney, a denial of corporate status, all right, um, affidavit yeah, all of truth, affidavit of facts, all right, and affidavit of non-taxpayer status, and affidavit of uh, common law name correction. So those are the documents which that you need in order to um, complete the process, and you can take it um, either to the clerk of um, the civil filing, um, filing section of the um, courthouse to the clerk of the Superior Court, or either you go to the Register of Deeds and get on recorded there under the miscellaneous in the real estate section. Right, right, right. And then and right, and so, I will tell you exactly how to do it. Many won't tell you exactly how to do it. Okay. And no, if I have to do the paperwork for a person, no, it's not free. Right, right. So no, those, who want, those who want the paperwork free, you can go to www.rdbaypublication.com, in which that is Sister Ross Mariah Bay and Brother Taj Tyreek Bay website, in which that um, they have documentation from off there, in which that... Um, some assume to be free, but I'm sure that they have to pay for the ink. I'm sure they have to pay for the cartridge. I'm sure they had to pay for the um, printer, and they had to pay for the right. computer to be hooked up to that um, computer and printer. You know what I'm saying? And um, so none of that shit was free. So, right, right. Um, you know, so we live in more, a lot of moors or moors come into this movement, you know what I'm saying, who claim to be moors, actually they are delusional. <laughs> So I'm simply telling you, brother, don't become delusional, all right? Um, if you have if you want services rendered from someone, then um, they have to be a, um equal trade um, within law. And I'm talking about law of the universe based on the laws of Mayad and based on the laws of Tahuti. It's a give and take. Right. All right? So right. Right. Um, these are the things in which that people have to understand. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing free. Everything um, comes with a price. Oh, of course. <laughs> all right? Life itself according to the scriptures, came of a price. So that's why the scriptures say, um, do you not know that your body is the temple of God and that um and that ye God and that ye are God, you know, and that um that you was bought at a price, so therefore glorify God in your body. Right. right so what right. was the price in which that of this body is talking about the price of this body being formed by the elements from hydrogen, from oxygen, from carbon but from these, these elements in which they have formed these six particular ele- elements in which they have formed the physical body into existence. And in particular, the carbon element, which is the sixth element on the periodical chart, hence the carbon atom, or atom cadabin. I know that, that was the crux of my conversation. You know, we could talk all out. day. I don't want to hold it in line up. I know you got a show. But the, one of the things I did want to mention to you is I did catch, I'm here in Philly, Philadelphia, and Natural Tahuti is going to be over at Black and Noble. I think right. it's this Saturday at, at 6 p.m. All right. So so I did check out the show last, I guess it was last, the week before last, where you right. had him on. Right. And, uh, and yeah, he was, he was going way in. Deep into the rabbit hole on the mother god, mother goddess, and understanding that feminine principle and the origin of things um, metaphysically when it comes to that, and that's that's exactly. some stuff that opens people's eyes up. That was a that was a heavy, heavy, heavy show, heavy show. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no doubt about it. So Let's I'm going to see it. him on Saturday um, mm-hmm. right here, and uh, I go down there anyway. Buy a lot of books down there. I know how King owns it. So I'll go down there anyway. But listen, I was telling you, I know we and you had a conversation about a year and a half or maybe two years ago, and I was talk, you know, talking to you about bringing you to Philly, and that's where I went to, got actually to bring you. Now, obviously, I've been busy, been, you know, some things have been going on, but, you know, if you open, you know, we can wrap about getting you getting you out here as well. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely open. Yeah, do that. I, I'm, I'm ready to come to Philly. Yeah, 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 because I'm... Um, yeah, I talked to, talk to him about, you know, trying to set something up. I'm going to be in touch with you now. Your con- I got your contact anyway, um, but it's on the website, I'm sure, too. Right, right. Just give me a call. Okay. All right, my man. Thank you. All right, all right. Peace. All right, peace. All right, area code 512. Area code 512, you on the line. 
Peace, God. Peace, God. What's up with you? Yo, just chilling, listening to the show. Um, I have something to tell you. Uh huh. I have awoken the seventh chakra. Right. And I've become the avatar. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Nah, but um, I had um, uh, well, basically, I mean, you know, I mean, everything, everything is going good, but um, I was saying something like, you know, to become more you know, electromagnetic, you know, attracting things, Mm -hmm. you know, towards yourself. Would you have, like, maybe uh, a mantra or um, something? Right. Well, we know that that um, in the fourth dimension, right, um, the sounds that created or produced the universe and the creation of ohm sound. So doing and resonating with the ohm sound, uh, two frequencies, but ohm, mighty, pop, me, hum, you know, so mm-hmm. oh mighty pad me home, oh mighty pad me home, oh right. the Tibetan yeah, monks, yeah, they do that. Right, right, right. Um, um, you can do new puk nu, you know, we said it's ancient Egyptian, a new puk ra. What was that one? Right, new nuk n u k p u p u ra r a or r e ray. Me ku ra. Nuke, nuke, poo, ray, or nuke, poo, ra. Nuke, poo, ra, all right. Yeah. Well, which I mean, mean I, which, which means I am God. All right. All right. That's, that's, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been doing ones like that, like that one, or Om Nama Shivaya. Um, yeah. I've been working, you know, I mean, of course, with the, the jewel and the lotus, but I've been working with the surrender. Mm-hmm. And um, would you what would you say between like the path of surrender or will? You know, I mean, like Aleister Crowley. You know, he had like, you know, he was saying everything with, you know, will. I, I'm sure a lot of, um, you know, other occultists had one like that too. Would you say surrender or or will? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Um, well. It depends because in order to surrender, you have to be able to wield it, and wield is is um stems from within your physical body from the pancreas, which is your solar plexus. Right. So if you have a strong solar plexus, then that's where will is um established from. Now your heart, which sits right above the solar plexus, is normally called a place of surrender. All right. When your heart surrenders, you know what I'm saying? And surrendering right. um, do not mean surrender in the sense of what we think that it means. It means um, to submit to the higher self or to surrender to the higher self as the energies or vibration move from the four lower devils, all right, into the higher self, which is the three higher chakras, which is known from, from so it moves from the lower bodies, which is known as the four devils, which is also referred to as um, the mortal body. Because these mortal bodies die, these chakras die along with the physical body, and the energy moves up above the heart chakra into the three higher, known as the Holy Trinity, known as the immortal body. So as it makes that transition from surrender from out of that area, um, you go into becoming immortal. All right. When you read the story of the eight immortals from the Orient, from out of China, study um, the lives of the eight. Um, Taoists, very well. Like Lao Tzu and... Right, right, the eight immortals. Study them very well because there's keys in there in which they, um, such as Qi Gong and Tai Chi, um, such as um, certain philosophies in which that it taps into um, from the poetry, from the particular stories in which that is folded around, in which that are keys to how to become immortal. And we talk about immortal, we talk about being able to have consciousness outside of the physical body. That's that's immortality. Oh. And you can and you can't reach that right. That's a form of immortality. That's the that's the form in which that most speaks about. Now we mm-hmm. some speak about the fact that we will be able to become immortal in body, which that is coming also. But that is something in which that has to be worked on based on mastering um the principles of food, the principles of water, 
the principles of brush and the principles of thought. Right, prana. Right, right. Any time that a um, either of those four are out of um, cycle with each other, it's like a spoke on a wheel. You bust your ass. Okay. Okay. So. All right. I just to... have uh, one more question, if that's cool. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, well, basically, you know, I, I do a really good job, you know. I mean, my ideas come to me, you know, like that. You know, I'm ready to get stuff done. But there's a lot of people that, um, I don't know if they're psychic vampires, but just, like, if they infiltrate with my idea or just people that, like, doubt. And sometimes it takes, like, my confidence from, you know, where it was. You know, because, I mean, I have all these ideas, you know, I want to bring to the world. And they're big ideas, but some of them just, when somebody, like, doubts or sometimes it, like, shrinks my idea. You see what I'm saying? Right. Well, of course, there's psychic vampire. And any time that you come into this information and you begin to start practicing and doing your meditation, you are a neophyte. And um, these psychic vampires would love to absorb energy from a neophyte because they're young and they're gay and they're just coming into the information and they have a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy. So they will suck the energy from you based on it. But you can't allow them to do it. So, like we just finished talking about the science of will, then you will build up your willpower and stop the process. Stop that from happening. You will shield yourself with gold light. You will be um, reverse or reflect those energies with bright light. Okay? And that can be as easy as visualization. Right. Simply picking up your vibration. When you um, use gold light, uh, that quality of light is so high that it runs away negative energy. And also, in the process of running away negative energy, it produces a healing effect within you also at the same time, from the spiritual all the way to the physical. All right. Because, I, I mean, this has definitely been working. Like, I feel mm-hmm. definitely evolving, but all these other people are like, right. I feel like they're slowing me down, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's why I, you know, I get away from these people. They, they, these are leeches, you know what I'm saying, these zombies. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like you are like, going to the fifth dimension and you have these zombies around. Right, exactly. Uh, last thing, I was just wondering, could you play my Limitless Joy at the end? I'm trying to get some, uh, you know, some airplay. All right, yeah, we're going to definitely try to work that out. Uh. All right, I appreciate that, God. All right, peace. Peace. All right, area code 340, you're on the line, 340. Peace. Area code 340. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Oh, okay, good. I had a question. <laughs> good evening, yes, everybody. I had, I had a... <laughs> How are you doing? All right. Um, that's good. I had a question now. I noticed, you know, you were talking about the different energies that's going on. That's going on um, mm-hmm. In I've been, now, everybody else, I know everybody else is experienced different, but I've been saying that, like, lately I've been feeling anxious. I don't right. know if anybody else is very anxious. It's like mm-hmm. trying to control, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just, just yeah, kind, but that's you normal. Know, that's one of the um, ascension or kundalini symptoms. Okay. Right. And even, um, anxiety, and even my anxiety, being anxious, um, being um, impatient, you know, is because there's a lot of energy in which that is being stored up within your body, in particular in the lower dantian, and that energy isn't being circulated throughout your body. So mastering that energy would come through the microcosmic and the macrocosmic orbit. And for the woman, um, you would have to raise the energy up the front of the body along what is called the conceptual and the governing vessel, and then down the spinal column or down the back to the G-spot or the perineum area in between the anus and in, um, in between the vaginal canal and up the front again, and you have to circulate that energy once you absorb that energy into your lower dantian, which is your navel chakra, or about an inch or two right below or inside of your navel chakra. Okay, so that's what you have to do, and that will stop the anxiety from taking place is through the circulation of that energy. Okay, now I I looked on your website. Maybe I didn't look look too good, but do you have any videos that teach you teaches you how to do? Because I'm not expert, so you know right. how to. Yeah, we have videos like that. for that. A matter of fact, oh. um, um, we have the goddess. Um, 
is actually by um, my Shindown brother, um, Kaye um, Lovell, in which that he did a videotape on that. You can actually call me and ask that 252-257-3588. That's 252-257-3588. And um, you can get that to you. I think it's um, $10. Okay, here let me let me grab because I, I grabbed my pen. Like two five two, two five two, two five uh-huh. seven three five two, eight eight two five two three two, five seven three eight, five eight. eight eight. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, because I mean, I'm. Thank you so much. You you have a peaceful night. <laughs> you too. Okay. Thanks. All right, area code nine one three. Area code nine one three. You on the line? Peace. 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 How you doing? All right, doing well. How are you? Her. All right, this is Aunt Ra. I've been listening to you for a while, man. You're deep, man. I oh, wanted yeah. to know. I wanted to know uh, if you knew anything about the African origins of the Ouija board. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, um, that is connected to the Ifa um, system. The Khan um, from out of um, West Africa, in which that um, also um, came from um, the runes, in which that the runes actually was um, um, black casting, in which that you will find within the Bible um, with the centurions on there in front of Jesus, which became the dice, as well as also prior to that, you had that within um, ancient Egypt, as well as also within um, the various systems of the African religion. So, um, yes, definitely Africa is the origin of. Um, divination. Divination. Huh. Mm-hmm. And now, can you communicate with spirits or the the ancestors? I know some brothers channel. Right. So well, you, you can, can do that with, with that. Um, spirits, or what is also referred to as familiars. Um, these are sometimes spirits in which that will act as if they are your ancestors. Now, what you have to do in order to make sure that you're not talking to a familiar and that you will bypass a negative entity and to know what you are actually dealing with, you will want to guard yourself in gold light and say an affirmation or prayer prior to even dealing with it so that um, it can make your reading the most accurate. And that's with tarot cards. That's with... Um, throwing up the dice. Um, that's working with coconut shells. That's with um, any type of divination system. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. Peace. All right. All right. All right. Every code nine one nine. Every code nine one nine. Uh, peace, God. Peace, God. What's up with you? Ain't nothing. I was just um I was just listening to you. I had a question about um I was just listening because I remember you said just said something about the coconuts, and I was watching a movie um at my cousin's house not too long ago, and um the next day air movie, and like oh, everybody got shot in the end of the movie, and then the girlfriend came in for the Puerto Rican kid, and she did like a ritual with some coconuts, some candles and stuff, and he lived and stuff. I was like, wow, that's why she did that. You know what I'm saying? Right. right exactly. And I was okay. But I just had a question about um. I had talked to you a while back. Yeah. Well, let me explain before. the signs of the coconut. Being that it's white inside, it symbolizes tapping into a batala, in which that symbolizes um the same name which ever used within Islam as a law or ura from out of the, um the ancient comedic teachings, in which that um symbolizes the crown chakra, in which that has its ties to ori, as well as all of the okay. mare, in which that symbolizes the universal principle of God. All right, that is personified within your physical body, and that is a batala. And so whenever you deal with white things such as coconut or white linen or white cloth, um, these are all things that is this color. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. I had another question, though. Um, mm-hmm. I just I just wanted to call in because I'm going to talk to you about um, the store because I'm from North Carolina, Stan Raleigh. And right. You said that y'all was uh-huh. going to look for a store. Did y'all ever find a right. place or open up a new store up here yet? No, not yet. Not in Raleigh. Okay, okay. That's a, that's basically all I wanted to ask. See if you guys said uh, move the store up here or no, whatever. No, we we need people to look on help us look. I'm oh, sorry, I said it again. We need people to help us look. We need um location, oh, location, yeah, location. Okay, right. So okay, know, like what what kind of um any type of like store you? that's about seventeen to twenty five hundred feet. Um, you know, um, uh, you know. Um, in which that we don't have to lease, in which that there's a building in which that we can buy. 
We trying to buy okay. things, you know, be on it. Kind of buy. Um, we're not dealing okay. with leasing and paying someone oh. forever. Them days over. Okay. So um, we want a whole building. So any building in which that is abandoned or um, any building in which that um, no one is in, in which that is for sale, you know what I'm saying? Um, look for okay. those like, right around Raleigh Fort um, area. Okay. Well, I keep my eye open around town and let you know as soon as I um, if I see something, if I come across something that you, I think you guys would be interested in. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. All right. Peace out. Peace out. All right. Area code three four seven. That's my New York fam. Three four seven. What's up? Hello. Yes, please. Yes. Um, I was wondering, do you need like a altar and and, and all that? You already able to channel like spirits? Um, all the helps because it's a tool. These are tools. Of course, once you learn how to do it, you no longer will need it. Also, because the altar will become your mind. Mm-hmm. All right, you will no longer need candles because it will become your mind. You no longer need incense; it will be your mind. Remember, you are actually the embodiment of the four elements. Your body is at a constant ninety-eight point six degree, so that's fire. You right. breathe, so that's ether, um, or air from your lungs. Mm-hmm. All right, you um. Your flesh, a 25% solid, apparently, and so therefore that's earth. 25% water. <laughs> you know, so you are the embodiment of all four elements which combine makes people. So you are a Syrian being. A light. How do, so how how do I get to, over? Um, yeah. um, those things are just used for a time period. Okay. So, yes. yes, in the beginning, you would need something in order to hone in on because your left hemisphere of your brain needs something tangible. The right hemisphere of the brain works off of something abstract, all right? So, but the left hemisphere of the brain needs something tangible, needs something that it can touch, taste, smell, see, and hear. Right. Okay? So, yes, in the beginning, you will need it. But like once your hemispheres of your mind combines or synergizes, and which that what helps with that is called alternate and nostril breath technique, in which that you illuminate the brain through activation of the eta and the pingala, which are the two sacral nerves at the base of your spine. And as you alternate between the breath, in which that regulates at 4, 16, 8. So as you breathe in for a count of 4, you hold it for a count of 16, you breathe out the other nostril for a count of 8, then you reverse it. And you do 20 of them. Um, several times a day, and that will synergize the brain so that the brain will act as one whole instead of a person using just 10% of their brain, which that's what scientists claim that we do. The other 90% of the brain will become also activated so you can tap into higher frequencies and um, get better communication from the ancestors. Can I ask you a question? Do you know what is it that a person secretes when they're in fear? Because I feel like when I'm more afraid, that's when I can feel and see things more. Like I can see like shadows and or right. Well, that's when I'm extremely a scared. Dramatic or dramatic experience. So in some regards, those open portals are gateways. But you don't mm-hmm. want to be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? All the time, you want to be able to gain control over yeah. it. And that technique that I just made mention of will help do so. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for your time. No, thank you, God. Peace. All right, bye. Bye. All right, three, two, one. Three, two, one, area code three, two, one, you're on the line. How you doing, Doc? Peace. Peace, how you doing? I'm doing well. What's up with you? Good, brother, good. Um, I have a question. You was uh, referencing to uh, Kabbalah, mm-hmm. and it's uh, referenced to Moors. Do you know, right. do you have any books? Yeah, it's in A.E. Wake's book, um, Holy Kabbalah. Within the first 20 pages, he tells you that the Kabbalah is actually um, separate books, you know, um, coming from out of the libraries of the Moors, in which that came from Cordova into Granada, Spain, uh, once they ruled Spain for almost a thousand years, actually from 711 A.D. all the way to 1492. Indeed, indeed. Definitely. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sir. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you was talking, yeah. Do you know anything, like, what like what technique, like, that has, um, I remember you, I was watching one of your lectures, and you was talking about uh, releasing negative energies of other people. Do, do you know how to, like, 
I didn't hear your phone was breaking up. Say that one more time, that last part. You were, you were talking about releasing the negative energies of other people. Right. And what about it? Yeah, how do you how, how, how do you do that? I mean, how do you remove negative energy from others? Oh yeah, of other people and of, of and from yourself. Oh okay. Um, there's certain techniques. Um, spiritually, you can actually take a bath um, with Epsom salt or what is called sea salt or Himalayan um, salt, in which that you will bathe in for at least 20 minutes, and that cleanses the aura. Or you can actually take an egg or coconut and go around the body and um, within um, two inches above the um, energy field called your etheric body within your both in your inner and outer auric field and remove the debris or bioplastic energy within that. And then you would take the egg and throw it out and break it so that the energy can be used. as well as also with the coconut, you would crack it or either um, plant those two things underground. Or you can actually transfer um, the bioplasmic negative energy to a tree upon permission because a tree and you have a biosymbiotic um, balance and influence within nature. It, uh, um, it lets off oxygen and you take in oxygen. You let off carbon dioxide, it takes in carbon dioxide. So um, you can ask for a fair exchange of negative energy to be released at the same time absorbing um, positive energy, which is negative ions. Definitely, okay. yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem. All right, we got area code 405. 405, you're on the line. 405, question? Area code 405. 405, last time. All right, we got 682. Area code 682 on the line. Peace. Yo. Yo, this B, B for work, man. Peace. What's good, man? I was, I was just tuning in. I just seen the little shit on Facebook, shit. So I'm, I'm looking at like, shit, like I'm, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. So you know, I'm down in the deep bottom of the, in the middle of the ball of bullshit. Right, right. I'm trying to see where is. I mean, like, I know, I'm, I know, I'm about to, you know, the far as the, you know, they talking about the 2012 and the solar yeah. flares and the power grid and all that stuff and, you know, with our DNA mm-hmm. and shit, so yeah. I'm trying to see if far as, like, I'm so, like, distracted by the mundane, I can't even get to the, well, I can, but, you know, so many distractions dealing with like everyday life, because see, right yeah. now I'm on. Well, the only way you can get into um, the higher field is um, through prayer and through meditation. Real simple. Um, as the scriptures say, "Be still and know God." So if you're not gonna be able to be still, then you know, even if you put out a thought or a prayer, because every thought is a prayer. All right, we ain't talking about just biblical and Christian or religious, but every thought is a prayer. So if you put out a thought and you want something to happen to manifest, then you have to be able to be able to be still and sit down. Um, so that you can get the meditation, you know, so that you can receive the answer, you know what I'm saying, uh, from God. So um, the whole science is to be still and know God. And if you can't be still, learn moving meditation techniques such as Qigong and Tai Chi so that you can begin to start channeling this energy because you can't stay still. Yeah, I, I got one more thing because, like, I'm mm-hmm. trying to see, I'm a Leo, I was born left-handed. And, like, I, I always, like, someone's always telling me, like, some shit is not right on this fucking plane. Like, some shit ain't, ain't right. Right. Like, shit, like, all this shit, like, it's like, you know how you got that inner, that inner self telling you, like, man, this shit, is, everything is fucked up. Like, this shit don't supposed to be like this. Right, right. Like, and I'm, I'm like, um, even, like, like one time, even when I was going to, going to church, like, one time I had a dream about one of my uh, church members dying, and then nobody believed me. Right. And, like, the shit happened, like, fucking two weeks later, and that shit fucked me up for, for like, like some months. This was, like, when I was a kid, though. Right. And I always have, like, crazy dreams, like, about stuff. And as far as the spiritual level, like, I got, I was, like, I've been I've been keeping track of, like, was, like lectures, like, from you, Bobby Hammett, uh, Phil Valentine, mm-hmm. right. Joel Pukrum, all the greats, you know. And, right. 
you know. And I've been, like, as far as, like, thought patterns and stuff, I've been trying to keep everything, you know, clear, like, as far as law, law of attraction, like you say. Or keeping there, like, all my thoughts clear, make sure I stay away from the negative thoughts because, you know, you get negative thoughts, you get negative energy. No doubt, no doubt. That's true. So I'm trying to see, because, you know, everybody physiology, you know, everybody's spiritual physiology is based, pretty much based off their sign. Right. Well, or, um, what time you was born. You don't know how to time. master that, right. You don't know how to master that. No doubt about it. Okay, so. Like we were saying earlier, um, the last three cranial nerves in the brain, once they are illuminated, you go beyond the will of karma, what is known as the will of um, destiny or what is known as the will of life, which is the zodiac. You become the combination of all the signs, no longer just one. Okay, and yeah. that's, what we, that's what we need to go to, becoming all of the signs. So you become the 13th zodiac sign, officials or MO tap, as we were talking about earlier. All right, brother, let me go to the other lines. I appreciate you giving us, giving us a call, Lane. And um, I'm going to get to these other All calls right. here. Thanks, bro. Yeah, I don't want to take up too much time. All right, peace. You got area code 609, 609, area code 609. You're on the line. Peace, peace. Uh, peace. Just, uh, call here. Yeah. Always enjoy your show and lectures. Um, appreciate that. Just wanted to uh, ask. Something about the uh, the whole science with the moon and uh, and the stars and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. When like we got the the retrogrades going on right now, mm-hmm. is it uh, is it something that's lining itself up for the whole shift as far as what's happening in 2012? Like get prepared mm-hmm. for December 21st. Right, right. Well, all, all of this is lining up for that. Um, there's been a lot of miraculous things over the last year that have taken place right. in the habit. Like, for example, Mars and Jupiter and um, Venus coming real close to the planet Earth. Um, you know, um, all aligning, coming together in, um, in different conjunctions. You know, I mean, so there's been different things in which that has taken place. You know, um, like a few months ago we had Jupiter and Venus to come um you know, become the brightest object in the night sky, which Venus actually is the brightest object, but Jupiter was right there with it, you know, in which that um, symbolized um, Jupiter during Christmas time, symbolizes the gift of benevolence, you know, bestowing of gifts, and then Venus symbolizes, um, you know, love. So right. it symbolized that conjunction of love being a gift in which it's being um, passed and thrown forth, you know, uh, within this particular solar system alignment, you know, that's what's taking place. So, yeah, there's a lot of things going on. And so it's just about us being conscious of those things taking place. Like I said, um, we don't even have to worry about all of that because we can actually um, get above the zodiac by illuminating those three particular cranial things, okay? Okay. All right. Um, Yeah, go ahead. Let me see here. We got some questions in the chat room. Yes, you can use sage and sweet grass in order to cleanse the aura also. As a matter of fact, you can go within the person's auric field, which is within three feet of the perimeter, and move the smoke up and down the body from the top down to the um, bottom of the feet, or vice versa, in which that um, smoke will illuminate within there, and also that will help cleanse the auric field also. So, yes, that is absolutely correct, my little check, so no doubt about it. Wow. All right, bro. All right. Thanks a lot. Peace. All right, we got um, caller 336, 336 area code. That's the Greenville, um, Greensboro, excuse me, um, Winston Salem Mary. Let's see what's going on here. Peace. Peace, 336. 336. Area code 336. Yeah, yeah, brother, I my bad, man. I had a phone on mute. Oh, okay. right here. Um, yeah, man, I've got a, que- a couple of questions, man. Uh, yeah. Lately, I've been feeling like kind of like real frustrated, like with right. people and, and maybe, you know, saying ignorant things coming out of their mouth, man. I'm trying to figure out, is that one of the one of the symptoms of all, all of the, the, you know, soul activity and, 
to get the cooling. I try to meditate, you know what I'm saying, when I can. I have a little month, one month old son, so kind of occupy my time. But is that like some of the symptoms of that? Yeah, well, I mean, we're talking about the ascension symptoms or Kundalini symptoms. If you look up Kundalini symptoms or the symptoms of the Kundalini, you will begin to get more answers. Like, for example, um, let's look at the ascension symptoms in the software and how they correlate. All right, when you're talking about that, you're talking about headaches, migraine, um, muscle spasm, um, lightheadedness, dizziness, um, digestive problems. Um, heart um, palpitations and um, you know all these types of things are happening. Um, confusion within the mind or brain, you know, uh, flu-like symptoms. You know, all these things. You know, energy fatigue. You know, uh, all these things take place because the DNA is being changed. Okay, oh, it's being oh, changed. Okay. So these are um, things in which that happen as they're going through the changing or earth chain, all right? In other words, going to a higher vibration. You start having weird, um, vivid dreams or, uh, you know, uh, I mean, all types of things, you know. Yeah, you have, um, yeah cause I have been having a lot of... Mm-hmm. Now, I I have been having a lot of vivid dreams. It, it right. seems like that I'm up. I know I'm sweating, right. but it feels like I'm, I'm up. Right. Well, see, those are the negative things, and most people don't know how to correct it. Well, that's what we've been talking about. You've got alkaline water, those alkaline plants. Okay. Okay. All right. I appreciate the info. All All right. Yeah, someone didn't like the information that we was dropping, so um, they cut us off. Um, but fuck them. Um, you know, this is what we do. You know, so um, we back on once again, taking the difficulties um, besides for that, and we're going to go to caller 267. You're on the line. 267. All right. So let's see here. We're going to try it again. 267 on the line. Peace, Dr. Eileen. All right. How you doing? doing? All right. Doing All right. Good, I, see we, we, I see we're going in and out here. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going in and out, but it doesn't matter. We're going to get it right. You know, they don't like what we're talking okay. about because this is the pure truth. Okay. Well, I had a couple of questions tonight, biblical questions tonight for you. Since we just passed the Easter uh, holiday, so-called Easter holiday, uh, I was just wondering uh, when we dealing with the Exodus, is there an, uh, an esoteric interpretation behind that, or would that be tying in with the actual misinterpretation of the Hicksos expulsion out of Kemet? Okay, um, the Hicksos, of course, is the Habakkuk which become the word Hebrews who are actually who are actually the followers of Heru, which the word Heru means light. So they actually um, were the um, creators of what is called the ancient mystery school or the Herbach teaching. Um, of course, we know that they were, um, became known as, as the Ethiopians, known as the Falashian Hebrews, as well as also um, they are found as the um, Zimba um, tribe within West Africa. Um, and you know that the closest ones to them were the Sephardic Jews, um, in which that... Um, you know, or mostly olive-skinned, um, colored or dark-skinned um, Spaniards, in which that mixed in with the Khazars, and this is how the Khazars or the Ashkenazans um, come in at, you know, um, as far as being a convert after the burning of Jerusalem, after the burning of Jerusalem during 70 A.D. So um, when we're talking about the expulsion of the Hyksos, 
um, we are really talking about um, the same people, um, you know, um, even though they were referred to as Asiatics, you know, um, we're talking about African people, actually, all right? Um, but they lived in Asia. If you go back and look in your Bible, which I hate to even use it, but it is good for something. Um, it does speak about the fact that Nimrod spread it from out of Africa as being the son of Cush. Of course, we know Cush is located within Ethiopia and Somalia and Sudan, um, Egypt region today. Also, Kenya, Rwanda, um, you know, area. Um, where they found the oldest bones that are Deganesh or Lucy, all right, um, which dates back to three million years ago. Now, we know that Nimrod spread it out um, from out of um, Africa into Mesopotamia, which is now known as Iraq and Iran and Kuwait, you know, on out into the Orient, all right? So when we talk about Asiatics, we're talking about actually the same people, the one same family. So when we talk about the Hyksos, the invasion of the Hyksos, we're talking about the same family come in. So this is the thing was that most people don't understand when it comes to reading this information. Wow. Because I was always under the impression that the... Uh it filled with the, the so called light skin or European people that came in and took over came in. No, no. Um they were still in a um in a cave for two thousand years, um, during the period of two thousand years during that time period. All right. Um oh, the first okay. they, the first time that they come out the caves is actually during the um um the explosion of the Greek civilization after we civilized them from coming out of the two thousand year um period. All right, because they were okay. in the case out of the six thousand year period, they was in the case for two thousand of those years prior to. And so for the last four thousand years, even according to their own history, um, you know, that was a Greek civilization. This is why they start everything back to four thousand years ago. Oh, Adam and Eve was four thousand years ago, according to the Bible. Because they they unto the Lord it's a thousand years. You know. Um right. you know, right. you know it was seven thousand years ago in which that um Adam and Eve all came about. It wasn't until four thousand years ago that um the story of Moses and you know and Abraham and all of this other stuff. So I mean it's a way in which that um it was good in order to put themselves within a historical perspective, you know, being that they didn't have a history. So that's what they utilized was our writings. The word Helios Biblios, which is holy Bible, actually is is called originally um the um the raw papyrus or the raw paper raw, which means the evolution and the rise in the raw, which actually is part of the Pyramidhiru text coming from out of ancient Egypt, known as the coffin text, known also as the pyramid text. Okay, these okay. are nothing but summaries of our information. So no, they didn't have anything. Remember they can't even um they don't even know hieroglyphics to this day. All right, Champoli right. um um had to go to um Ethiopia in order to get a cliche in order to decode um a Coptic um in order to decode um um the tablet for him. Okay. All right. So okay. yeah, these are just simple facts. And uh one other thing, uh since we just passed this uh Easter holiday, could you give like a little small brief breakdown on the you, true you know aspect that, of Easter? Maybe, Right, well, we know that bunny rabbits don't lay eggs, so um, that's the first <laughs> foul. Um, two, um, the Passover um, is talking about the sun passing over from out of winter into spring. So it symbolizes the spring equinox um, from out of Pisces into Aries, in which that happens to be the first um, sign, you know, of the zodiac. Aries is the first sign. Um, Pisces is the last sign. So we're talking about Alpha and Omega. All right, this is why it says in the Bible that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega because it was during the Passover in which that sun in the sky uh, became personified as the sun on earth or the sun made flesh or the word became flesh in which that personified supposedly 2,000 years ago as Jesus in the age of Pisces. And now here it is 2,000 years later, um, um, passing out of Pisces into the age of um, Aries. You know, or, well, you know, of course, you know, that was 2,000 years prior to Pisces. But now it's 2,000 years later, and supposed to his return, and we're be now going from out of the um, into the age of Aquarius. All right, so all these things are equivalent to the fact of astrological play, astrotheology. Um, it has um, has a play within the physical body. Jesus um, symbolizes the sperm, and we they get baptized in the River Jordan, and which that symbolizes a sun also, because around the head of a sperm is a light, and which that 
um, emanates from it. And as it travels through um, the chakra system, all right, and some have 12 chakra systems as we now speak, um, to get baptized in the River Jordan by the 12 pair of cranial nerves, hence, um, it was that sit around the pineal gland, so hence the 12 disciples or Jesus at the supper or the author and his 12 knights at the round table. You know, all these things are mythological, and they're all talking about processes which that takes place within the human body. Um, so as above, so below, as within, so without. So the whole thing about um, Easter, the bunny rabbit symbolizes fertility, all right? It's springtime, so it's time for humping. You know, um, you know, people are getting horny, you know what I'm saying, or get horny during springtime, so it's time to have some babies during this time period, all right? That's what the eggs are symbolic to is fertility. The bunny rabbit being that, you know, um, it's one of the fastest creatures in order to multiply, all right, um, okay. um, to re- reproduce itself. So that's why those images was used, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, people were smart enough to know that Jesus symbolized the sperm itself as well as also you see a vesica Pisces or Pisces. Um, um, you see Jesus sitting in the middle of the vesica Pisces, which symbolizes the vagina. So man is inside of the vagina. So that symbolizes um, the penis or, or, or short forth from the penis, the sperm, the semen. Hence the semen and hence Jesus um, being on the ship, or which that he calms the seas or the emotional body. You know what I'm saying? Or he symbolizes the fish. So hence he asks Andrew and Peter um, to cast down your nets to become fishermen of men. You know what I'm saying? All these things are correlated to the fact that Christians um, put this um, this fish symbol, which is symbolic to Pisces, on the back of their car. So hence the fish becomes a symbol of Jesus too, so not just the cross. He's also called the lamb because 2,000 years prior to the Piscean age of 2,000 years ago was the um, age of Aries, which is the ram or the lamb. So, um, he, so two thousand ago, when it supposedly they tell you that mark the zero year, um, on now to two thousand years later, you know, marked um, the ending of the age of Aries, which is the Lamb, you know, or the Ram, you know, that symbolized that, and then of course he symbolized the fish also. So each time he symbolizes a new age, and go to Matthew the twenty second, I think it's the twenty second chapter, the tenth verse. Um, the disciples asked him, well, what would befall us in the last days? And he say um, that uh, follow me into my, um, when you see a man with a pitcher of water, follow him into his house. Well, the man with a pitcher of water is the symbol of Aquarius. Okay. Which we're now, okay. Which we're now going into. So all of this is astrological play. Okay. And, and does it also, uh, does the Easter, you know, as far as the, the, the terminology tie into uh, Esther, the book of Esther. Yeah, yeah. Esther in the Bible is what is also Ishtar from out of the Sumerian and Arcadian text, known as the Mesopotamian okay. um, book. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff there. It's always a pleasure to hear you, you know, break down these things. So uh, that's all I have for tonight. But uh, right. keep doing what you're doing. I truly appreciate it. No doubt. No doubt. You definitely will. All right. All right. Get ready to end the show. Thank you, brother, for calling in. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human.
concerns in existence An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance System regulates to bring about specifics In the group based on value and natural characteristics Current radiates electromagnetistics Of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it For seen in others in time, order, importance The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments Earthly state of human concerns in existence An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance System regulates to bring about specifics In the group based on value and natural characteristics Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories, shit that works.